Hello friends, welcome back to our pastoral daily devotional series called In It Together. I'm Reverend Michelle Manuel. I'm with St. Luke's United Methodist Church. I'm an amazing pastoral team who wants to bring you uh, daily devotionals for such a time as this. And so today, um, instead of talking about a specific scripture passage or a teaching, I want to invite you into a practice with me. Um, I have found that it's a little bit easier when times are sort of chaotic to try to find some points in life that ground me. We can all tritely say, well, God is our anchor and I'm grounded in God. And that is true, but God invites us into spiritual practices that can be physical markers in our lives in order to bring order amidst chaos. And so um, at this beginning of this Lent, I picked up a practice that I practiced all last year, but kind of fell out of as the new year came, called praying the daily offices. Some of you may be familiar with this prayer practice already, it comes from uh, kind of the higher church backgrounds from Benedictine spirituality and prayer practices, but it's essentially praying prayers that are already written. And the daily offices are different times throughout the day in which we stop and pray. Now, if you're like me, I want to go full out the very first time. And so I want to enter the morning prayer practice, the midday prayer practice, the um, afternoon or evening one called the Vespers office, the comp line, I wanna hit them all. But I encourage you as you come to this practice, just start with one. What's What might be an easy and light rhythm of grace for you? Maybe it's midday at lunch, you pick up your prayer book and, um, and you pray uh, halfway throughout your day. So you will uh, need to find a prayer resource and a daily office prayer resource. I'm using this one called The Divine Hours by Phyllis Tickle. She has uh, three of these for the entire year. Um, these are, this one is prayers for springtime. And um, at the top of the page, I'm actually in the Holy Week segment but at the top of the page it says uh, Thursday Maundy Thursday um, this is the Thursday of Holy Week and so here it is just written the morning office it's to be observed on the hour or the half hour between the hours of 6 and 9 a.m. and so I invite you to join me in this practice I'm going to read these things and kind of teach a little as we go so that you can find your own prayer book. You need not purchase this one. There are lots of different resources. I, I do appreciate Phyllis Tickle's version, but there is um, the Book of Common Prayer, a, a liturgy for ordinary radicals that came out a few years ago. There's a lot of different resources. Um, praying the hours, praying the daily offices, those types of things you can search for and there are free resources online for you. You need not purchase one. So um, hear now these words from the prayer book. Um, there are scriptures all throughout. There's a call to prayer, there's a greeting. Um, let us enter into this practice together. And as we do so, I invite you to just take a deep breath and center yourself as we enter this prayer time together. The call to prayer reads like this. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands fast forever. The hills stand about Jerusalem, so does the Lord stand round about his people from this time forth forevermore. That's from Psalm 125. And Lord, we request your presence by reading Psalm 119 here. Make me understand the way of your commandments that I may meditate on your marvelous works. 
remember your word to your servant because you have given me hope. This is my comfort and my trouble that your promise gives me life. And the morning lesson is from John 14, verse one, Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You trust in God, trust also in me. And now for a reading. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knowing that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father, having loved those who were in this world, loved them to the end. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from the table, removed his outer garments, and taking a towel, he wrapped it around his waist. He poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. And he wiped them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, at the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus replied, if I do not wash you, you can have no share with me. Simon Peter said, well then not my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus said, no one who has had a bath needs washing. Such a person is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done for you? You call me master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you must wash each other's as well. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. That reading was from John 13, verses 1 through 15. And now the refrain, do not let your hearts be troubled. You trust in God, trust also in me. The morning psalm says this, it's from Psalm 78. Hear my teaching, O my people, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable, I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount the generations to come, the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children. That the generations might come to know and that the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children so that they might put in their trust God and not forget the deeds of God but keep his commandments and not be like their forefathers a stubborn and rebellious generation a generation whose heart was not steadfast and whose spirit was not faithful to God the refrain do not let your hearts be troubled you trust in God trust also in me and now the cry of the church comes from Psalm 55. In the evening, in the morning, and at noonday, I will com complain and lament, and God will hear my voice. I invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen the prayer for appointed for the week reads like this pray with me almighty god who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of saving spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now for the concluding prayer. Look down, O Lord. I pray on all of us, your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and to be delivered into the hands of wicked men and to suffer the torment of the cross. Amen. So friends, if you've never prayed the hours before, I hope that you learned something, that you enjoyed that, and at the very least, that your curiosity is piqued. Sometimes we enter a prayer practice or a spiritual discipline, and we work really hard at it. But I've found, as someone who <laughs> works hard to help others pray, and works hard to help others study scripture, I have found that praying the hours is an easy and light rhythm. It's a grace that reaches me, that's already there for me to but receive it and pray it aloud. So if you're tired, if you're worn out, if you're weary, if you're burned out on religion, like Jesus says in Matthew 11, come, come and let's pray the hours together. God bless friends.